Hello and welcome back. This is of course one ado with another episode of our Steinworld Let's Play. We're up to episode 27 and you will see that we are not in the level 30 area today. We're taking a bit of an interlude from our level 30 activities and responsibilities and we're going to be running around the level 20 area in Mulong Garrison, which is another dungeon which I never, I didn't do at the time when I was around level 20 in this region uh, in Rocky Passage and so I'm coming back to finish it off now. It's uh, not a wave dungeon like the ones that I've done like Winter Hold and Cyclone Chamber. It's more of a classic dungeon crawler where you go through fighting the minions and then there's bosses scattered throughout as we're fighting the first boss at the minute. Gudrit the Guard, I believe. Probably pronounced that incorrectly. And you'll also notice that I'm not alone. I'm joined by Westvilla, my good friend. We played the game quite a lot together. And definitely without his help, we would not have made it through. Uh, the first levels we probably could have, but by the end we would have struggled. And you'll also notice as we just work, go through the loot and we get unlucky and don't win any of the stuff we actually want. Uh, we've got some floors right. Well, West Villa got the floors right on this first one, which you can use for Glyn Fora, which is much higher level. So, well, level 20, but much more difficult, which we won't be attempting. And you see I'm getting a bit cocky with the amount of damage. I'm not keeping an eye and I aggro so many of them I die and I have the walk of shame to get back. But so the floor's right we've got and we also got some level 20 books which are cool to learn though don't have much practical use I don't believe as we come up to our second boss Sligo or Siligo. A bit hard to read on my screen apologies the stone cutter has a really cool area of effect spell uh, does a lot of damage in terms of the areas that he's covering so um, all the bosses actually had really cool kind of attack animation they did more than your just your classic hitting in front of you like Ammon at Windsor Hold. We still haven't found our rhythm here in terms of uh, how we want to go around fighting the boss. So later on we get a bit better, a bit smoother. You'll also notice, unless we try and get the book and floors right, I don't know. We did actually get it this time, which is good. Uh, but at the end we did some trading after the video to make sure that we had equal, equal share of the loot of what we wanted. So it all balanced out. You'll also notice that I have an extra weapon in my hotbar and uh, extra crafted... Uh, red square helmet you'll have to excuse me there because I am recording a few episodes in parallel and this is progress I've made in episode 28 so a sneak preview into the future I'll update you on all that I've done there but I actually don't I don't think I use it after a bit I worked out you know we kind of worked out that West Villa would take on the dodging responsibilities of the group and I would uh, take on the healing and together we would also both do the damage so we've got the uh, I can't remember his name, it's the it, Invigilator or something like <laughs> Invigilator, that might be wrong. Um, but I aggroed him and I thought by running away I could then prepare, but unfortunately not. He just followed me the whole way and he might have followed me the whole way out. Invigilator Jackson, there we go. So I'm kind of scrambling here and then he uh, does that thing where they freeze you and then speed up super fast to get to you. So, but nonetheless I'm able to uh, deal quite a bit of damage to him try and heal West Villa but he's dodging so well that I actually miss him with my healing a few times but luckily there if you notice his health was plummeting and it was only keeping up because I managed to heal him so I keep him alive there's another miss and we get some this would be pretty good gear I think if you're level 20 uh, but given we're both level 30 and we're decked out in Waldenbach gear uh, it's not the most was it Waldenbach? Winterhold gear it's not the most useful and as you progress through these little minions do actually get stronger so the dungeon does progress in difficulty, but we never massively challenged other than that first time when I died. And we take more of an approach here of rather than aggroing every single one and killing every single minion, which you don't need to do. We run by and try and <laughs> aggro as well as few as possible without wasting too much time on picking the most effective route. In, in all, I think this dungeon took us 28 minutes. I don't know if there's a ranking I'll have to check. As you can see, the third boss, the Water Elemental. Uh, so yeah, I've sped up. That's why it's sped up because otherwise it would be a super long time of a lot of fighting the same kind of monsters. So uh, the and I've also sped up the boss fight slightly just because they're also quite long. And once you get a sense of what's going on, you kind of know their patterns. As you'll see, this is when we really got got the rhythm of West Villa going back and forth. He's a better dodger than I am. I think most people are. I'm not very good at it. And I periodically am healing him, as well as laying on some damage as well. And although it takes a little while to defeat our uh, Goss, I think that's right, we are able to do it and get some more Fleurs right. So we're actually able to stock up our supplies pretty well there. 
that healing noise is <laughs> definitely uh, interesting when it's sped up. I think the game <laughs> definitely sounds funny when you speed it up. So um, I like listening back to it. And as we progress through this next camp area, and I can't remember how many bosses there are. I think we've got two more, potentially. It was this point I realized that it's actually a much bigger dungeon than I originally anticipated. You'd also notice that my mana is actually struggling to keep up, I think, with Winds of Hold because of the, the 10 second waves, the 10 second gap in between waves. It just gives me enough time, just put me on the right edge of my mana usage versus my mana regen. So there is actually a staff that when you get and you cast it, it gives you extra mana regen. And we're hoping to get that probably in level, uh, wait, level? Probably in episode 28 as we are onto Bone Crusher tr Trads. And he's also got, as I have said with all the bosses, a super cool um, ability. And we've, as you see, the uh, tandem that we managed to set up here in terms of dodging and then myself doing the healing and the damage. So, but yeah, my, my mana was struggling, so I had to, because uh, I was probably cycling through things pretty quickly compared to how I normally do, as well as doing a lot more healing than I normally do. With Winds of Hold, uh, I only need to heal every now and then. I was kind of healing for two here. Um, but I was able to keep up. I'm glad that I kept my mana pots. I was thinking of selling them. I had sold my health pots, which I haven't massively regretted. There's not too many situations where I'd be needing the health, but the mana I've definitely been using. So I think I'll hold on to those for at least a little bit longer. Um, I am going to get to the stage at some point, I guess soon, hopefully, where the whole of my hot bar should be starves rather than anything else. Uh, once that day comes, we'll have plenty of other issues to worry about other than just inventory space. So we're coming into the final stretch here. The final boss you can see is on the right. He's named King Tajin and at this point West Villa reminded me, asked me if I'd picked up the Royal Bears Crate quest for this dungeon and I had not. And then he checked and there actually isn't one, which is slightly strange, I guess, because uh, you can probably do it quite quickly if you just blitz through and just did the bosses rather than all the minions as well. It might be a bit too easy to get a crate from. But I still thought it was a slightly interesting decision to not reward people with a crate here as we go back and forth one more time so it's been it was a lot of fun to go through Mulan Garrison finally experience it there's a couple of other dungeons that we need to tick off I know Glyn 4 is one that I referenced and also not a dungeon but we do need to at some point find out a way to how to kill Katrina Scarlet Wood Scarlet Wood can't even remember her name anymore uh, but the one down in the Whispering Slough because uh, I want to be able to say that I've killed her um, take that boss off our to-do list as we come to the end of this battle. West Villa just about holding in there with my health, healing myself while I'm waiting for my staff to regen so I can get back to healing him. And together, although I didn't do amazing dodging, we are able to slay him. We get this Whisper of Titans, which would have been a really good staff. It does give you plus 7.7 7 mana regen if you're holding it, which could speed up my mana regen, which is why I do actually take it in the end, but it's too much of a faff for me. And ultimately, I leave it behind. Yes, at this point we realise there's no way out. Uh, I thought maybe the gravestone or the gate up there with the lock on, you'd be able to get out in some way. But no, we feared that we might have to walk all the way back. West Villa goes off to get himself killed as a quick way to get back to the start. Uh, but luckily asking Tram, someone says if you just leave your party, you'll get kicked back um, out, which is perfect. But that's going to do it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy, please do like and subscribe. But until next time, goodbye.